So we have a little bit of a revised agenda and um, we've got a lot of moving parts tonight. So we're gonna try and get through those fairly quick um, as we have a lot going on and we have some other other people coming in at certain times. So uh, call the meeting to order. Um, we have scheduled appearances at 6.15 with, uh, well, we're gonna actually move the, we have a body art regulations hearing, which at we're six, gonna open at 6.15 and kind of move that along into July. Um, no, it should be later than that. Well, we looked at July 29th or something. We need to see August where everything is. We can I don't wanna move it too it again, far. I'm up for whatever you guys think. It doesn't really matter to but me. But we have to pick a meeting date. We just have to pick a date. Uh, and if you wanna well, pick a date. Well, I, I mean, We'll, we'll, we'll get to we'll, it. We'll get, we'll get to, to that. It. All we'll right. Think about that. So, and then we'll be we'll be uh, meeting with Chris Curtis from the Deerfield River Watershed Association. Um, so I think you were uh, I didn't see these quite number, but you wanted to move up some of the other votes early on yes. before we get going, right? So, so the first three, Deerfield Naturals Municipal Compliance Confirmation. Okay. The DDIC Annual Appointments for Approval and the yep. Merrigan Way Survey Proposal for Approval and Signature. Okay, so um, I'll start with the first, which is the Deerfield Naturals Municipal Compliance Confirmation to the CCC, the Cannabis Control Commission. Um, I reviewed this. And, oh, I do have a copy. Good. Um, and we, I think we did this for Mass Sons just recently as well. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, so this is just a notice saying that they're in compliance with all of the bylaws. Local, and yes, we did get bylaws. that confirmation from Bob. Yep. Walton. So they're all set. Okay. Good, so um, I didn't entertain a motion to sign this. Um, I make a motion we sign this. I'll second it. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye, Aye Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Aye Carolyn Wilson. Ness. Uh -huh. Sorry, David, Aye, oh, Carolyn Ness. See, you, oh, you have one here to sign here somewhere, right? Yep. yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, that is done. And then, um, I'm not, I don't think I'm ready on the DDIC appointments at this time. I think um, I want to think about that a little bit and really like to have a discussion. You know, I have not met with DDIC, I don't think. Um, I know they're their own entity. We just kind of appoint mm -hmm. and they do their own thing. But, I, you know, I think economic development is extremely important. We have a lot moving. I, I haven't really, I haven't seen if there's a report in the annual report that we just got printed. That's, but. Um, I would entertain a meeting with them to understand what their goals are and what they're working on. Um, I just want to understand the makeup of that board and where they're going, what their plans are. Um, uh, and I don't know if there's any openings coming up, but um, I just, I'm curious about who's on the board, what we want to do, what we'd like to see going forward for economic development as it relates to DDIC. So. Okay, so you want to set a meeting up? I think I just want to up. table that for a week. It has I to mean, be done by June, June 30th. 30th. Right. And oh, that yeah. was the reason that we got yep. the no, that's email. Fine. Is we're getting close and normally we would start doing appointments yeah we typically do but it hasn't yeah. been on the radar screen because there's other things way closer yep yeah we can always have a meeting at the mm -hmm. last minute to go and run through our appointments um okay so i will reach out to paul and let him know that you want to have a meeting so we'll have to schedule him your next meeting is the third of june okay so we'll have to schedule him yeah okay That'd be great um um, you know, it's, uh, okay. I was going to say we can meet following after that, but whatever. Yeah. Okay. I just want to think about that. A All bit. right. So you want to think about those. Yep. Um, the other, uh, let's see. So, you that by our, Ms. Curtis. so June uh, 3rd. Uh, yeah, so we got a little time on that. The, um, and the Mer Merrigan Way survey proposal. All right. I'll give you a brief rundown on okay. that. So there were several things that need to be, and this has gone through many incarnations. Oh, yes. And coming into it, I didn't know everything, but there were some, several items that need to be identified in the survey for two reasons. So we're doing a survey so we can sell the property, but we're also considering extending Merrigan Way, and we have never identified Blacksmith Brook. Mm -hmm. And for best uh, practices when you sell up that piece of land um, we should have it identified so that the use going forward um, they know where everything is we also had to identify an easement a sewer easement Correct. for Kevin so 
what we had to do is we had to circle back around and identify the things that needed to get done. Now, we couldn't, so this pertains to a layout as well. Right. But we had to get a new quote because we changed the parameters of what we had asked Heritage to do. So with these new parameters, because these hadn't been identified before, mm -hmm. um, after review of what we need for the procurement and what we need town meeting to do in terms of acceptance of, a, of the road or the layout of the road is how it's framed, um, we've got to change what the parameters of the work are. Mm -hmm. So that's what that proposal represents. Um, There's just two copies, right? Yeah, okay. I just want yeah. A, yeah. a wet copy for him Fine. and a wet copy yeah. for us. Yeah. And this goes directly to a discussion we'll have a little bit later. Well, we have to do this because we need to. We need. We to do sell. need to get it done, and I, I. This has been ridiculous. No, I know. This was turned over to us September. Yes, and so there's. It yeah. had more moving parts than we thought it did too. I know. I know. I, I'm. It's not anything to do with you. I'm no, just it's. It's. We just have to. I'm trying to manage that too, and we just ran out of time. Yeah. Well, the, you know, and this, this, I, I don't think this is the firm that had been dealing with this and had surveyed that property many other times no this was just randy eiser out. did it the last time last minute we wound up with this person and i'm not sure is that the right choice well the thing about surveyors I mean, at this point has everything already a lot the of them are really busy so it's hard to get a surveyor to commit i tried to get randy at harold eaton associates mm -hmm. um, to do a project for me and i reached out to him four times in a three month period and didn't get an answer and I'd reached out to three other people. So mm -hmm. we're very lucky that Mark's willing to help us with this. It's just the moving parts in it weren't well defined. So this they're they're better Casey defined now. Fine. Everybody's on on the the same page. Me, you, they understand Kevin, what, what was Lisa, there. Mark. Okay. And All so right. they because we have a better idea of what we need to lay out mm -hmm. for the road, this should satisfy those needs. Okay. And you get to hit me next time if it doesn't. And that's the and that's everything we're going to need to sell that property. Yes. The extension of the road, any other the easement, Blackstone Brook, and, um, and possibly identifying or identifying that space that we need right. for the for turnaround, turnaround for Thayer Street Associates exactly. trucks, so they don't have to back and any other truck that and any comes other truck that there. comes in right. that might be delivering yep. for Thayer Street or another company, yep. so that there's enough room that they don't have to back down Coats out, right. which is a, okay. a that big public concern. safety concern. I make a motion that we approve uh, uh, a signing of uh, uh, of the chair signing the uh, proposal. survey proposal from survey. Heritage Survey. Yes. Yep. In the amount of fifty nine hundred dollars. Yep. Fifty nine hundred bucks. Any second? Are you think about that? Um, what do you think? I'll second it on the condition that they give us completion date. Okay. I can't get that right now. I, we have to schedule the work. I can get it from them later, but I can't get it from them right this second. Like literally can't get it from them. I um, understand you can't do it right now, but just with the understanding that they needed. understand how, how important it is for us to get this moving along. And I'm sure they do at this point. So. They do. We've had a couple of calls with them. Um, yeah. The reason that this goes out further than we would want it to is, so there's a progression you have to do to get this on the warrant, <clears throat> to have the layout approved by town meeting. We don't have time for that. Right. Because I wasn't able to move on that contract faster. Yeah. Um, it's two to three days of work on the ground. Plus, then they have to take all that information back and input it into the survey. Well, I just want to make sure we're going to have information in place so we can get it all put together for a special town meeting in September. Yeah. Well, we have the authority to sell the land. It's just we have to approve the... the survey on it. Right. But you also, before you sell it... So this survey covers two things. It covers acceptance of the layout because you have to lay out the Merrigan Way again. Yeah. Um, but it also provides the document that we put into the procurement, which defines the property. So um, we should be able to sell it without the layout being complete. We can't because we have to define Merrigan Way, and it has to. Be, it's getting extended by so it has 50 to be feet. voted by town meeting. 
Right, and, and so we don't have time to get it done for town meeting because there's two approvals. You need planning board approval on it, and you need the select board to have a layout hearing, God, and that has to be done year. seven days before town meeting, a so we year. don't have this time. This could have been money in our, we could have already yep. sold this. We'll just keep rolling forward. So I've got a second. Any, any further so, discussion? Do you want me to ask them for a deadline, or give them a deadline? Okay. Um, and May 25th is fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Two to three days of That's field work. Day. Give me an extra day. Two to three Give days of field day work. Day. <laughs> Let's look beyond town meeting and the election. Right. So anytime so, after like uh, the end of right. June. Oh, we have to close the close the fiscal year too. Yeah. So um, okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Carolyn. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Can everybody mute themselves if they're not speaking of the audience or people that are calling in, please? Thank you. Uh, let's see. Okay. So um, with uh, 615, we will um, now open the continuation of the hearing of the body art regulations hearing and we're really going to open this hearing to um, postpone the hearing continue so it continue the hearing sorry it's an important word continue the hearing um, and let's discuss that date so we had talked about we're looking at the calendar about July 29th if you wish to do it later than that that's uh, fine. i mean i don't know if you can also the next one is august 12th i think yeah. august 12th is the next one after that i'm just i'm just trying to think if we're going to have any substantial changes in the we situation. can always extend it again if we have right. to but i mean the only I almost, thing is once you go past a certain time you got to pay another couple hundred bucks for the fine um right? it's less to fine for a board of health one we don't have a we don't if have these are our regulations the hearing we tend to follow the zoning, mm -hmm. um, the the zoning hearing process. But I guess it really there isn't a matter defined amount of time. I actually don't know if we're ever going to, you know, even by September have the right. town hall open for a meeting. So I guess we'll it really it, doesn't. We'll maybe move it again when it comes. Yeah, up again. Uh, let's we just do to it make July. Sure it's safe for people to come and voice their right. Yeah, concerns. Or, or we create a or larger ve venue. Yeah. in the so cloud for yeah. people to join so, and so, so that's what, going to be a challenge that we have to get through yeah. okay. so what so what date were you thinking of well, july 29th or august 12th either. or august 12th we were trying to give it a little bit more time carolyn yeah. knowing about the reopening thing yeah i'm not i don't even think there's going to be much difference between the 29th and the 12th let's the so 12th, then. let's just do the 29th and get it over oh. with all right I mean, there's not really any controversy. These are I know. really good regulations that from yeah. Northampton, and we, ch you know, added a couple things from Boston. Mm -hmm. And Dick and I have really we looked over them, and yeah. and you know, I had a lot of feedback from Meredith O'Leary from Northampton mm -hmm. on how it, you know they're very clear for enforcement, and yeah. so. Um, I, I mean, there shouldn't be any controversy, really. We just need the public to hear them. Right, yes. and we need the public to be able to weigh in. Yeah. And we're slowly perfecting this. Yeah. Knock on wood. <laughs> so well, let's just go July 29th. Okay. Okay. So uh, we'll, we'll have a we'll move, have a motion to move the uh, hearing, postpone the hearing until um, so July 29th, yep. 2020. Uh, I'll make that motion. And second. I'll second it. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. McDaniel. Aye, Carolyn Ness. Aye, Dave Wolfram. Okay, so that is done. This is and and continuing it by continuing it, are these regulations as they are are in force? Mm -hmm. Should there be an opening of a? Not that there's going to be at this point, but right. There, we were concerned that there was mm -hmm. interest in opening up a body art um, studio. Yeah. So well, we just need to have something to sure. by which they operate. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We wanted to make sure we had these in, yep. you know, ready. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is, um, is Chris Curtis on the line? 
Yes, I am. Oh, just uh, hey. unmuting myself oh, here. Good, yeah. We would have to wait that extra time. How are you? Good. good. How are you? I'm doing good. Good to good to hear your voice. Um, so, what do we have going on today? Let's well, um, I am. I've asked to talk to you tonight wearing a different hat than I usually wear. Okay. Um, I've, uh, in my retirement, taken on a role with the Deerfield River Watershed Association um, as vice president of their board. Okay. And um, we have been working on a new project, um, kind of at my suggestion, that the board has voted to endorse it. And, and the idea is to consider um, pursuing um, National Wild and Scenic River designation for the Deerfield River. Okay. And um, this is something that I have a fair amount of experience with. Um, in my days working with the Planning Commission, I um, was responsible for getting the Westfield River designated as the, the first National Wild and Scenic River in Massachusetts. And since that time, um, there's been a number of others that have been designated, but not the Deerfield. And it seems to all of us on the on the board that the Deerfield is probably one of the most highly qualified rivers in Massachusetts for for wild and scenic designation mm -hmm. because it's uh, a pretty spectacular river from a scenic standpoint. Yeah. Um, it's obviously an extraordinary uh, whitewater boating and rafting uh, destination. It's an excellent trout fishery. Um, you know, it's got historic significance and. It's got um, segments that are, are very wild and, and free-flowing. Um, I don't know if the board was able to get a copy of the fact sheet that I put yes, together. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm reading it now. I haven't had a chance to okay. go through the whole thing, but yeah, it's, it's great. Okay. Yeah, I'm, my apologies for not getting it to you sooner. Okay. Um, but I, I thought I'd, if I could, I'd take a few minutes to just kind of go through some of the key points. I'd love that. Um, okay. Well, um, in terms of, you know, the process for doing this, it's a, it's a national designation, so it requires ultimately an act of Congress um, to become designated. But there's a fairly lengthy process of um, studying the river that happens before that time. So what we're, um, what we're actually asking communities to consider at, at this point is, is to endorse the idea of, of pursuing funds for a feasibility study to, um, to look at the possibility of this designation. And that is a federally funded process, uh, no cost to the communities. And it's basically just looking at the um, attributes of the river and whether or not it makes sense to, to designate it. Um, there would be a local steering committee set up with representatives from each community. And it's a couple year process to go through, at least, um, this study process. And then ultimately, if it is deemed to be eligible and worthy, um, there's a, a process of actually getting the designation to happen, which involves communities taking a vote um, through their boards of selectmen to endorse it, and then having the congressional representatives um, pass an act in Congress to, to get it approved. Um, so, it, you know, the whole thing, and in the case of the Westfield, the whole thing took... Um, more than 10 years <laughs> that was that was a lengthy process partly because it was the first of its kind yeah um i think in this case it would probably be more on the order of five years um but we would we would very much like to you know initiate that process um there are certainly some benefits that would come to the community with with a designation like this um there's um most most notably um federal annual federal funding that would be provided if the river is designated as what's called a, a partnership river. Mm -hmm. Partnership river is um, it, it's basically a river that's managed with a local community in partnership with the National Park Service. And the Park Service provides funding on an annual basis for projects to benefit the river and to help manage it. And in the, the cases of the Westfield and other partnership rivers, they've been getting on the order of $220,000 a year for projects. Um, and those are for things like protecting land along the river or community grants for um, improving um, fish habitat or water quality or even doing riverfront road and bridge projects that are sensitive um, to, the, to the river itself. So there's you know, sub, sub, some yeah. su substantial benefit. Yeah. I mean, obviously, there's the benefit of, of protecting the rivers 
free-flowing quality. Um, I think part of our, you know, I, I guess our, our long-term concern is that um, there have been in the past uh, proposals for additional dams on the Deerfield, including one in the Stillwater section of, of our community. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, we would like to see the, the rest of the river that that portion that does remain free-flowing to continue that way um, and continue to be the amazing, you know, sort of recreational and fishing resource that it, that it is. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's the benefit, you know, that we, we see in, in doing all of this. Um, so um, there's a lot of things that it wouldn't do, just to kind of be clear that, you know, it, it doesn't put any controls on private property. Um, it doesn't federalize any of the land. Um, it doesn't require or create any new federal permits or regulations. Um, what it does do is say basically that, that you cannot build an, a new dam on the river or a, a major sort of water resource project that would alter the flow of the river and, and change its character. Um, and those are federally, those are projects that would have to get a federal permit. So that's how the federal government gets, in, gets involved in just at that level. Okay. Um, so like there are, um, yeah. Yep. Well, I was, I was coming to you guys first um, because you know you're the community that I think um, it takes a leadership role in in Deerfield River issues, as mm -hmm. as Carolyn um, knows mm -hmm. very well. Yep. And I think it would be you know really beneficial to have uh, your board's endorsement for the idea of going forward with this, and then we would you know, pursue the same endorsement from additional communities up and down the watershed. Um, but I'm coming to you guys first, um, again, because I think you guys are, are the leaders and, and really have, have taken that role on um, for, for a lot of projects going, going uh, back in time. Yeah, I'm excited. So, um, Chris, we're good. having um, a resilient communities meeting on June 11th, and um, okay. maybe... Um, we we could put you on the agenda just to do a quick awareness update thing. yeah awareness because um there's going to be quite there's quite a big agenda uh we have you know um healthy soils we have the mvp program we're trying to coordinate projects up and down the deerfield together you know people are just mm -hmm. talking about them so to see if there's anything that we can do okay um and then uh that, that sounds good carolyn good audience, yeah man. so I, I forget, there's like two or three other presenters. So anyway, I can give you the call-in number and I'll, and I'll put you on the agenda. I'm, I'm Great, I, I would be happy to, to yeah. be part of that. Yeah, I'm in, I'm, I'm um, in that, that. This was because we I'm could sure. roll this out. I, I, um, I think this is a really good idea. It's, it's such um, a significant um, national local obviously but it, it's i mean there's not very many places like the deerfield river uh that are still a, very much wild and and scenic and and you know like you said fly fishermen or um you know uh, boating all, all, i mean you know a rafting uh, or just just actually just sitting out and watching the river go by i mean it's such a beautiful place and um we have to protect it, it and we have to um I mean, it's such an asset to our community it sometimes gets overlooked, you know. It's just always there, and people think it'll yep. always be there, but it won't if you don't protect it. I mean, obviously, there'll still be water running down somewhere, but the quality of it and the, um, you know, and how it flows and how it r interacts with our community and our economic development and, um, you know, a lot of, lot of travel. You know, people use it for, for fishing and stuff. We have, we have businesses in town that, you know, thrive because of being able to fish it and um, make sure it's healthy for that, and I, I think it's a great idea. Also, um, also in Excellent. June, we're having um, River Access Forum. It was supposed to be um, uh, at the end of April, and um, so we postponed it because it, obviously it was an in-person yep. kind of thing. This is the Franklin Conservation District. Got a little grant from the state, and so you know the, there's not good access anywhere on the river, and it's over natural river bank, which is easily eroded when you have huge numbers. So um, we did, uh, we surveyed some of the more popular sites. We, um, you know, did a lot of outreach. And so this is sort of the 
culmination of the study and, and supposedly coming up with um, recommendations. So actually you might want to come call into that one as well. I'll forward you the information so that you I, could... Carolyn, I, I, I did... I did get an invitation to that in my email today, Carolyn, so I, I'm already signed up for that one. Oh, good, good. I just, I just feel like these are, yeah. would be two good things that would, um, you know, be participatory with the other communities up and down the Deerfield. Absolutely. Those are great ideas. Okay. Well, if you're signed up, that's great. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Um, so I guess do you, um, I would make a motion that we would support this activity um, yes. so that we can let other communities know that we're excited about this. And Yeah, I think it's a, it's, it's a great topic. It's a great um, plan. It's a great idea all around. I'm just, I thank you for leading that effort. You know, I mean, it, it takes people sure. like you to be able to, um, you know, see something, obviously have the experience of that. Um, and to move these things forward. There's just too much sometimes to get your head around. And it's great when, when people, you know, that right. are retired, in quotes, <laughs> have the, have the <laughs> forethought to, uh, to take on this kind of stuff. I, I just think it's wonderful. Um, it would be such a, such a great thing for our community that if, you'd, if you'd head that up. That'd be great. Did you have so, any questions? Thank you. I, and it's really a passion of mine, well, uh, just, something that I love, and I, I'm out kayaking on the river all the time, so yeah. uh, something I, re I really enjoy doing. That's great. Dave, you had a question? Well, it's just, you know, there's a lot to it that I don't think this really looks at it in depth enough. Of course. For me. Yeah, there's probably uh, a lot Unfortunately, more. Eversource or New England Power holds all our right of ways down through Deerfield. So we can't really use the river legally. Mm -hmm. And it's just, you know, a, I just want to make sure that's being addressed in some way. You know, as I support, you know, protecting the river, obviously. Uh, yeah. But it's. Uh, that's one of the river access issues that are, uh, we're trying to deal with with this forum. Yeah. Is to figure out how we can get. Um, better access to the river mm -hmm. so it's not like just I, I had a hard time oh, hearing I'm, I'm sorry I had a hard time hearing what David was saying yes um, he's a wizard. oh yeah. David Could David is concerned that yeah David is concerned about the access issues of you know the right the utilities own so much frontage river frontage oh yes yes absolutely well you know access um, improvements might be the kind of thing that the partnership river funding could help to um, address. Uh, what, another reason why it would be a good thing for communities to, to get enrolled in this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, it also might give us a little bit more leverage with the utilities going forward. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's what we need. That's what got my yeah. interest, Chris. Yeah. yeah, because you know. Back when I was young, you know, that river was a very popular river for recreational, all kinds of recreation. Yeah. Um, you know, one of the Absolutely. favorite one of the favorite places was Rainbow Pole for swimming, which is no longer there, um, because of the way the watershed was released during the uh, hurricane. But the uh, so, what place was this, Dave? Rainbow Pole. It's down by the bars farm in that area. Oh, yeah. it was all washed out. Yeah. Oh, really? What I read? Huh. I better. I'm going to write that down. So. Um, that's oh, because you're not as old. Caroline, as dirt. could you repeat what 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 <laughs> that that place was? I um, I couldn't hear. Rainbow Hole was it? Rainbow Pool. Rainbow Pool, which um, was down near the bars farm area. Oh. Yeah. That um, it got washed out um, from Irene. Which which is near where? Uh, far Melnick away farm. farm maybe? Yeah, What's it's up? down by the Melnick farm. Uh, it's right on the end of. Um, South of the bridge, maybe? It's by uh, Child's Crossroad. Oh, mm. okay. Oh, that's right. There I was a little is. path, yeah. a little road that went. You there. drove down. Yeah, yeah, now it's gone. I it's mean, gone. The, whole, the whole road and everything's gone, I think. But, you know, I know a lot of people do rafting and everything on there now, yeah. as long as the dam schedule is. There is a little parking spot I huh. notice people park just before you get to the pastures at Melnick's. Yeah. Uh, people pull off and maybe put in kayak there and stuff. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we do need mm -hmm. better access for sure. 
Yeah. Uh, it's just natural you know, banks. Oh, I know. I, this by Bridge for a long time. I know exactly what David's talking about now. Oh, okay. I never knew it was called that before. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yes, I know that place very well. Yeah. Yeah, there used to be a okay. rainbow trout there. Oh. <laughs> Cool. Oh, okay. Um, okay. Okay. So we're, yep. Uh, oh, so we had a motion. We have a, a second. Uh, all those in favor? Any other questions? All those in favor? Dave Wolf and I. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. And I can't thank you enough. That'd be, that'd be wonderful to, to learn more about this process as it goes on. I'm sure there's a lot of work ahead. And, um, so it's great. Absolutely, yeah. Thank you so much. Well, thank you so much. Sure. Really appreciate your support. Yeah. Um, I might ask Casey to um, see if one of you could sign a, a letter of support um, sure. that basically just, you know, uh, formalizes your, your motion and, your, and your, your approval. Sure. We can do that. Can yep. you send me the information and I'll, yeah. I'll do that? You send it to her. She'll, she'll get it back to you. I, I will. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Um, I'll talk to you on Friday. Do, do you, uh, yeah, I think do you want to talk me to, to uh, we address do. the MVP issues? Yeah, I or is that on the agenda? It is. It's on the agenda. It's the next item here, and I think um, it's on the packet. We do need to um, we need to figure out what we're doing here. We're, we're compiling the budget. We are doing the warrant tonight. It's everything's kind of this is last minute to figure out what we have for money to go forward and what we don't have money for. Um, I know we we all talked about these are really important programs. They are important all, programs. How do we, how do we my issue happen? my and let me know if you can't hear me, Chris, I have a stupid mask on and I can't <laughs> talk um, and I'm loud as it is. <laughs> Um, one of the things that's happened because the MVP rolled itself out, this next round rolled itself out in the time frame that it did, which wasn't very many, it was a few weeks ago. Um, we didn't have a chance to go through a certain process that the town requires. And I know this has happened before. MVP doesn't seem to follow the they same don't. grant process no, as everyone don't. else. It's a disaster. So I think the board needs to be mindful of the fact that capital needs to look through this and they really haven't had a chance to see it much um but we still want to go forward with the grant so it sort of puts us in this position where if because it isn't funded it isn't we haven't defined funds to pay for that hundred six thousand one hundred dollars we don't have a funding source and so that's Unless the biggest the problem. Right. Stabilization or something like that. But well, the thing is, is it needs to go through that process. And we also need to see if we're going to get the money. You know, one of the things that MVP, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, Chris, but one of the things that we experienced in my other life in another town was a comment from several towns that they received from MVP folks to, to start setting up a stabilization fund particularly right. for these projects right so I think that's worth a, a look at um, it's just with COVID-19 the entire world has changed I know and it, well this was an area that I spoke it when we reviewed the budget and the warrant last night was that if if a pro I mean we have a program here but if there we, we need to have money set aside we obviously need to be very um, frugal about what we're budgeting and what we're spending but we also need to be nimble to take advantage of these issues when they you know these opportunities when they come up we do have money set aside we have uh, quite a bit of money in stabilization and capital stabilization and we do have some free cash roll into next year we but we just still we need to figure out a way to make sure that we have a dedicated funding source because when you can get 75 percent or so of a project paid for that you're going to have to do anyways you know yes we all want to protect you know and not spend money but you also still even if you're in a downfall you still want to be spending money on things that are such a great deal why wouldn't you well yes you this whole whopping road stuff which is what i would really as a person i would as a town administrator i would really like to see happen the problem is is i can't find money in the budget for it i know it's a lot of money and so it's a lot of money um, when I was going through the warrant with everybody earlier, and by everybody I mean the town council and the moderator this morning, um, their suggestion was to put it off um, until September because it would allow us to go through the capital project process. 
and also to identify a, a funding for, source that's firm. Which that means we might we be able to be create taking one. advantage of, of this grant. But um, this Chris, problem, right? what this um, round anyway? Did, we'll miss this round. Would well, the money not, that we've already set we aside for tie and bond to do that extension on Mill Village that does not count? The the money that you spent, um, it, I believe it was in April of last year for time bond to do an alternative analysis of the that brook near Wapping Road would not qualify as a match because it has to be spent during the time of the contract uh, um, okay. period. Gotcha. Okay. Um, well, I mean, I just I'm looking at these six items and. Um, the stream is important, but, but again, that's $25,000 to come up with. Right. Um, healthy soils, while it's really important, I don't think like that's it's That's how not, we're going to do how the marijuana, though. Well, maybe. Right. Or we don't do that's how we anything. Do the, or right. we don't. That's, right? But that's how you're... I, I, I feel it. like we could get a match from someone for that. But if you don't... Um, I, 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 I did talk to, to Keith about that, and he, he did not think he would have a, a match alternative for us other than town funds, unfortunately. Right. Yeah. Um, I just think, and then if we're not even looking at that this year, you know what I mean? Might well, not be worth yeah. doing. Um, but green parking lots are, you know, that's somewhere where I'm, you know, we have the match from Frontier because we've got to do the parking lot anyway. So... That makes sense. Right. And then, you know, Leary Lot, I just think oh, it's need important. To, that yeah, we, we need, need to get to, that because done. Because if, yeah. if a stimulus package comes along and we're shovel ready to, with an engineered project to move forward and get the economy moving with jobs, that would be an area that I think is important. Um, you know, there's, you know the, the green infrastructure rain garden thing is kind of on hold, right, at the moment. It's a placeholder, or not available kind of stuff. Um, you know, I, I'm not right. sure that, if that, that can wait until the next can round. Wait. Yep. And the Frontier High School Climate Science Programming, while I think is wicked important, I know it's just small money, um, but um, I, we don't know if there's even going to be a school next year. So I, I, I don't know. I, I'm, it's small enough money that we could make something happen there for sure, the match on that. Um, yeah. And the green infrastructure policy implementation, um, again, is small money that we could find. But, I mean, it, it does add up. I mean, when we're always looking for... I know, I mean, but I just don't see how, I mean, we shouldn't, it's such small money. For the issue is, is we need to identify a funding source and Capital Improvement Planning Committee has not had a chance to look at this. Mm -hmm. They're going to be loath to look at this in, in less than a week's time and give no, you an I, approval. I get that. I mean, we um, talked about it the other night. But the other thing is, is we really need to be careful that we hold aside money and stabilization because we may need it for operations for the next two fiscal years. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. that's my caution. And it's no knock to you, Chris. It's just a funding need. thing. But I, I need to be we very had, careful. Yeah. We've had, this will be 10 years of problems at Wapping Road area. I know. I, I'm the all, one that, wa that kind of wanted to see that. Those are all systems are in failure. Yeah. As a new employee, I looked at that with John and went, whoa, we need to fix that. It's a mess. The issue with it is, is I don't know that we have the money. Well, we and I'm trying to be very... Well, we have no the money. Well, we have but the we money. also need to be mindful that if we don't get a lot of money in revenue next year, we've got to balance it with stabilization. And, well, and that's use, a lot of money. We're not going to use a million and a half in stabilization. No, but you got to understand that stabilization might have to stretch for two fiscal years. I get that. So yeah. I think being cautious about pursuing these is important because there's a lot oh, of I residents too, out there looking if you get the engineering, to see how we if spend we, money. This is for engineering, 25000 for engineering. I know. Potentially, we might get it done if there's an infrastructure That's program. true. But we still have to and find. And if the there money. is a hurricane or something like yeah. that, we can we have our hazardous mitigation plan done. Right. We and missed, we, have we ways missed two to get rounds there. because we didn't have our hazardous mitigation plan done. I get renewed. that. So I do. This it's is just I'm cautioning everybody about the money because I think you have know, to be mindful of your we bylaws. Are, we're money. We're, I mean, we're we're very mindful of the budget. We've been through that left and right. So I think that's not a concern so much of mine. I feel like we're in a lot better shape than many other towns and we need, still need to plan for going forward but 
I hear what you're saying. You need to market. We have a process but that we have I, my to follow also, too. My concern is, is the, is the program like, if we pass on all this right now, we don't have any, any engineering to take advantage of in November if there's a stimulus package or in December or January. I know. We, we have to wait another whole year to get anything going. Um, this I just our think we're, we're constantly waiting on projects and it's, it's very difficult. Um, but do, do they, I mean, really the large one is the Leary lot and, and that. The rest of the stuff is we have to find a match for. We could hold off on a couple of these things, but it's really we're talking about the stream, stream restoration, engineering, and the um, parking lot. The parking lot. And that's construction stuff because we already have the um, design work done on that. So, yes. um, this I is think the actual construction. If you this is going to save us money. It's going to save us a huge amount of money. We are own 50% of what they put in there. So, why wouldn't we want to support? 75 percent payment of a green parking lot right and it's going to affect our drainage downtown that's going to help our drainage no those two items the rest we could hold on for sure are the bottom two are small enough you could find some money somewhere but if i had to wait on those other items i would it's really that stream restoration and the engineering and that and those parking lots and and one of the large one is already is already got a match for from frontier so yeah the the parking lot the frontier parking lot already has the match right has the match so it's really just 75 to get a whole parking lot done oh my gosh come on and yeah. that and we would collect that in taxes and stimulation if because we we're going to do some kind of design in the back to make sure that berkshire brew could do some kind of you know access there i mean this would we would generate business to cover this i i, I feel like if we went to the town meeting and said, you know, this is, we need this investment. It's a hundred, you're, you're bringing in 800, nine, you're bringing in almost a million dollars worth of work into Deerfield for a hundred thousand dollars. So yeah. where are you going to take it from? Where are we going to get the money? Well, we would get it from, I get to be the bad guy. Well, I love being the bad guy. This is capital stabilization. Yeah. That's exactly what that's We're for. investing. For a hundred thousand dollars, for a hundred thousand dollars, we need to hold back free cash because we need to have that right. for next year. So you. if you're going to do this, I would recommend stabilization. It's not my, f I'm just yeah. being cautious. Yeah, but That's my job. I know, but for you're, projects like this where you you're can bringing state in a million dollars. You're bringing in a million dollars for the town of Deerfield with a hundred thousand dollars. So it this comment no goes sense. to the capital improvement I'm sorry, planning committee. That's not, that's not, and this is stuff that we actually need to do. So it's not. And, and I think that we really, I mean, I know we don't have time now before this town meeting, but in September or whenever we hold our I next one. I think we one, should set one up. We have to set up one because we, we can't be constantly be going. I get it. And we um, really, I think, and we take this summer to really sit with the capital and planning improvement committee, planning improvement committee. committee and lay out um mvp projects in town where we have them on the list already start getting i think i think they may, some of them may be on that uh plan already because i know he was he had jeff we, had been updated on some of this stuff but we really we have, have to a pick list those of out we have a list of culverts the furcog is supposed to be doing an inventory for us they we haven't need been to be so they people are aware and it's much. not like the i don't want to have the the capital plan committee kind of get hoodwinked constantly by we keep bringing no, projects out concern. of the blue and that's how it keeps happening because that's how the state rolls it out it's like you have to be reactive you can't just ignore it or else you nothing get gets it. done and so to that point because jeff brought this up last night at the joint budget meeting um if you do want to go forward with this for annual town meeting then i think you need to frame a conversation with them and i don't know that you have time to have a meeting with them we have we less than 10 days yeah, to town meeting in terms of preparation for us so i think we need to reach out to jeff and talk to him because he specifically asked if they were going to need to to meet again um yeah. i did think he mentioned and jeff can correct me if he wants um i did think he mentioned that they might consider publishing or noticing for a meeting uh, right before town meeting. Um, but, you know, they need to understand. I think if you look at the numbers, it makes sense. But 
I'm just trying to be cautious about the money. I'm trying to be cautious about following the bylaw and giving them an a adequate time to review it is what I'm trying to do. Mm -hmm. no, Keep I everybody it. honest. I get it. It's just everything's running. So, you know, this is something that they've already presented their capital if, plan if to you as well. Phase six was coming in three weeks, or or in, I know in we try to plan for I, I would it. would just wait. I mean, it's not like I mean we have enough going on, and we are buried. And with that's the this other work. thing. I'm it's not really keen on having another three projects to, do to handle. All this stuff. But it's there might not be part. an MVP five, uh, six for a while, because of the COVID. Because of COVID. My, my understanding is that they're going to go on to a more of an annual basis for funding now Thank going goodness. forward. So the next round would be a year from now. Yeah. See, so I don't want I don't want to I don't want to sit this one out. What What is the deadline for submitting this? It's June 11th. Uh, that's why it's important from um, from my perspective to, to to get some real clarity about what we're what we're doing tonight because I, I don't have a lot of time to put an application together and right. I, I would have to go into you know full swing on this right away if you do want to proceed. So I think you have to decide which projects you want to proceed with. It sounds like a, you already know. My top. And so, Chris, it would mean that you streamline what you approach and do the two that we can get a donation. For one this. and so which ones are they? One and three. Yeah, my my, it's the, uh, so my it's suggestion the, to it's you, the, from what I'm kind of hearing from it's everybody, is that it sounds like number one and number three are the ones that you really want. I think number five and six, if you put them in, it's going to improve your chances of overall getting funding for the whole package because it comes, becomes more comprehensive and doesn't yeah. cost the town much of anything to do that. Right. So um, my, my suggestion to you, based on what I'm hearing, is that you do number one, three, five, and six. But obviously it's your call. Well, this, what this does, if we, the healthy soils thing is, is how we're going to look at the residential agricultural district. I just don't know where we have the capacity. I don't I mean, think. I mean, honestly, staff capacity. We don't have the, the capacity for that. We're we do have better. some help with, you know, very. thankfully, Chris is very helpful with help with connecting us to people who can help us with, you know, these bigger projects. But. Staff capacity, I think if we limit it to, because Frontier is going to, there's a piece of this with five that Frontier will be helping with. Um, and the policy implementation, um, some of that we may see just going through the green communities application. Although you can't marry the money, you can certainly reference the fact that you're already working on these things. Right, Chris? I, I unfortunately can't really yeah, hear you, Casey. I'm sorry. Right away. Um, it's a tough connection for me. Yeah. No, well, she's a ways she's, away from the mic. <sighs> okay. All right, I'm not speaking. No, we're good. Um, I, I, my concern is that we're, we have so much going on, and we've got right. to think about right. priorities, right? right? I know this is valuable, and we need to do this, but I feel like if we did it next year, we could also do it. But I think, you know, I, we have the sewer going on, major project, ton of staff time. We've got the old Deerfield right. plant to start looking at major stuff, you know, especially if we take on these two, plus the other 12 MVP programs we're working on already. Yep. I mean, I know. That's a lot. More office staff, it's a lot to manage. Anymore. What would happen if we applied for this grant and didn't accept it if it was granted to us? Well, they just kind of wouldn't want to give it to us again. Kind of thing, Can right? you ask Chris? He can't oh. hear us. Chris, if we if we applied for this and then we didn't take it, is that that's probably not well? It's not. Could be a funding issue. I, I think I would I would strongly discourage you right. from from taking that approach. I, yeah, I think that would really hurt your um, overall chances for future funding. Yeah, I, yeah, because they I do agree. a lot of work into I agree. it. We Plus, you do a lot of work. We're paying for the engineering and the application stuff. It doesn't make but sense here, you know, not like to you that's find true. out if you get it or not. Is there it does some cost way you money to have the applications yes. after? Yeah. Well, it does. Is there some way, Chris, that we could wrap in a little bit of um, regenerative design groups work with uh, um, with number one, the stream restoration, wetland restoration of Wapping Road area? I mean, is there a way to get it started? Um, 
start the process? I don't see a whole lot of overlap there, okay. frankly, Carolyn. Because um, we were, we, you know, we're talking about farmland reclamation there, and you know, so I don't know. We're, I think we'd be talking really about two entirely separate consultants doing different work, and I, I don't see them overlapping too much. Okay. Well, that's fine. I, I, well, I we can you. table it. I just okay. part of I it know it's is, important to you, and I um, get it. Part of it is is to have you know discussion be ready for the planning board discussions mm -hmm. and yeah um, I know uh, you know if we put it off too long but I just I'm worried about I'm worried, I'm worried about, about staff capacity maybe, but maybe also we can money. do it outside maybe yeah, I can work some something idea. out for somebody else to do it mm -hmm. you know to come up with a um, I want to use regenerative design because they have the original Healthy Soils EEOA grant. Right. So we want to be consistent and we want to make sure we're fitting into their programming. Mm -hmm. um, but maybe we can get somebody else to do it with them for us. You know, for the front the whole thing. So we don't have to even use any of our MVP money for it. Okay. So the so, the so we're going to do one, three, five, and six, right? Mm -hmm. And Chris, I'll talk to you. I have the National Association of Conservation Districts has the pollinator program that's already online. I'm on, I'm on the national education. Okay. I'm on the national educational committee, and it's a, um, it's a wonderful national. It's already done curriculum. So we could add that in as a match, maybe. Okay. Um, well, we can talk uh, separately about about yeah. that. Uh, the Franklin Conservation District um, match or something like that. I mean, that might okay. that might be the entire eight hundred dollars right there. Um, okay. So is there is there general consensus about about the which ones to move forward with? Yeah, I th I think one, so. One, three, five, and six. One, three, five, and six. I'm um. Yeah. I guess. I mean, if anything had to, uh, yeah. I guess I know you need a more of a. He needs to know exactly what to write to, I and know, we and need I to know of, what to put on the warrant. My hesitation is like I would peel off more than that, but I understand you kind of need a well-rounded application. So. You know, we um, do. You do. So I get to be that. competitive. Yes, really. I, I understand. Yeah. And you know, I know that we're concerned about the money, where it's coming from, how we're going to do that. Again, we don't even know if we're going to get the grant. So we've been very lucky all the way through, and it's been really a lot of your good work that's got us there. So it, w it would be nice to get some of this stuff okay. paid for, but um, we'll see how that goes. You know, I don't know when they would. So they yeah, would. And, they and, would. And you're, it would close on the 11th, you're right? Absolutely right. That. Yeah, so you you have one more meeting before the eleventh, but I, I really need to know tonight yes. you know what we're doing so yep. that I can Yeah, I no, can I understand. Get yep. Rolling on this. Yep. Let's do one, three, five, and six and then um, and then, you know, I guess the application will go in, close on the eleventh. It usually takes a while before we hear anything. At least a month. At least a month. So maybe but you know, I don't know. There, there, what, what they're saying um, notifications sometime in mid-August yeah and so you would probably have a contract sometime in late September so we'd have a maybe a fall town meeting that's we'll know what where I we're mean at. we I think could it makes put it sense off to put we could put off funding it but but, it, we, but we commit to apply to for it I think I think yeah I think you to have to apply for it this. I never mm -hmm. wanted Chris to not apply for right. it right but then, I but but budgeting it, we could wait till fall town so meeting in September. Him. Could we wait till a September town meeting to actually fund the the uh, the match money, or do you need the match money before you, anything else? The way the RFP is written, it says that the town has to either have the funds for the match in hand, or or make a commitment to take take upon the, themselves the process of seeking approval for them. Well, we so I guess you make you make a hand. commitment that you're going to go to a specific town meeting to seek the funds. Yeah. 
fall, um, fall town meeting. I, I haven't really asked the question about whether fall town meeting is okay or not. Um, yeah. It I, is. Um, oh, we we have to. <laughs> I'm sorry. It, it must. Casey's saying it must. It must. <laughs> But we have, uh, we okay. probably have the money. I think you probably have to wait. No, it's, you, it's you not. You have to wait for town meeting approval before you could have a contract uh, right. signed, which is right. what we had happen this last time. The, right, right. If you recall, this, yes. this current grant, we had to wait for town meeting. Right. Um, but that, that worked out in the end okay. Mm -hmm. And I think that's kind of where we'd be too, because we'll have a better idea of what's happening from the state by then. I mean, we still we do have the money to do it. We have we have money that we could come and, and you know call a special town meeting any time for. Um, so it's not like we're we're broke and we can't afford it if we get it. But we'd really love to have a better picture of where we're at in the fall and do a fall town meeting for it if we know by September. Or do something do like we that. have any more updates on Kelleher Drive, the um, culvert? Um, yes. Look at the yes. Yes. Look at you the need to do a notice of oh. award. You, you want to move it came up that? yesterday. <laughs> oh, yesterday. Yes. Okay. I put it on as an item unanticipated, so you're good, you're good. Chris. Oh, I saw that. that. Yes. One, okay. Three, five, and six. You know, just, if I we're not going to fund okay. it until September, why don't we do two? It's only forty-five hundred dollars out of the and we might little get over a hundred thousand dollars. Donation. I think I can get a donation for this. Forty-five hundred. All right. I don't think two will happen until next year, though. That's my only concern. Uh, yeah, my main concern is office staff. I, I, I would prefer Chris, not to do if, two if until get, next year. If we get the grant, if the grant is awarded in August, when does two have to get done? That. Um... Well, you have a choice of the RFP offers a, a one-year grant ending on June 30th of 2021 or a two-year grant ending on June 30th of 2022. And can you separate out each section or the yes. whole grant? Oh, okay. I, I, yeah. I, I think you can, you can separate tasks into different fiscal years. So that's what, well, that would, that's what. Well, how be great. about, could we do the healthy soils over a two year? Because one year is not enough time to meet anyway, to have meetings. Then we should do we it do. next year. Sure. We yeah. should put that one off because no, if no, we're gonna. No, we get awarded it. Yeah, but then we run into the same problem we have now. Yeah, but it's, we have two years to work on it. That's what he's saying. You can do it as a two-year. So it would end on 2022? Just yes. June of 2022. Yeah, that one but would that end. way we could start working on it with the planning board. There's going to be a capacity Yeah, we could issue. do that. That's my concern. Is There's going to be a capacity issue because yeah. we're not done with all the MVP grants that we have now. So much and two people to do it all is really hard. Sure, yeah, two yeah, people to do is, it. It's hard. But, There's a but, lot to do. But this is why you have that you're hiring the consultant. This is hiring the consultant. I know, but, I know, but you still have to manage brand. the background I know, of it. I know, I know, I know. And the money is is important. Managing the money is important. I know, but I think we can get a donation <sighs> for this over a two-year period. It's up to you. Well, you'd have to know that up front, Carolyn. Um, I know, it, I know. It, it couldn't be. I, I, I right. think we can get a donation. It, ha it has to be stated clearly where the match is coming from. We I would know. have to pursue a match in September, and we'd have to set the date. I think we should start thinking about the date for the special town meeting in September. Mm -hmm. So we can meet his, his needs in terms of a contract if we do get the money. Right, right Chris? Well, yeah, because we want to move forward with I'm, the... I'm, yeah, so me. what she's saying is should we focus on a... Uh, we'll have to focus internally on a date for for September town special town meeting so that we can meet your needs of getting funding at a sp specific time. I mean, so when, I guess whenever you hear one, there's a lot of moving parts. If you ever hear we win it, and then you find out you know when they'll need a contract done, you're thinking late August or September. Um, yeah, we'll get started on figuring out a date. That's right. I think I think I, I think if you were going to do it in September, um, you'd want to do it early in September for special town meeting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I just want to make sure that the would state we have is free out. cash done? In other words, would we have the no. recap done for free cash? No. Not necessarily. No. Not that early. Not that early. I think you should do the grant application for four of them, not five. I agree. That would be my thought. 
I agree with that. And I know Carolyn's not going to like that answer. <laughs> no, no, it's, it's fine. We can one, put this three, off. One, three, five, and six. One, three, five, and six is fine. I just, I hate okay. to see <laughs> two Money. not get done. But I, know. I know, but we'll come back a, to it. Because this is, again, this is your under, undermine, this, this uh, is, your, the underpinning of the whole process that we were just talking about. Mm -hmm. And uh, Next time. All right. No, that's fine. Okay. Moving on, because we got to move on. we got a, we got a lot okay. going on. So, okay. So, okay. So, one, three, five, five and, and six. six. Yep. So. Th th thank you. Thank you Appreciate Chris, the guidance. very much. Sure. Um, let's see. I'm trying to go off here. Let's see. Tell, tell Keith that we're going to do um, his thing the following year in April, okay? And I'll okay. Get, and that way I have plenty of time to get a donation. So, uh, okay, so did we okay. want to, um, we've done the layout. We've we figured out the layout. Um, we can push off the select board appointment. We need a clerk. There's a couple forms that you have to do for the state that you actually have to have a clerk for. One of us needs to be yeah. a clerk? Yeah, oh, one of you oh, needs I to. nominate Dave. Oh, zing. <laughs> <laughs> I'll I second that if he's, a, if okay, he's around there you go. signatures. Yeah, do you want to be clerk? Fastest vote ever. Yeah. Okay, so I'll make a motion to um, to. No, appoint. I already did. Oh, you you did made the motion. Oh, you get I'm, to second, I second it. Okay, I'll second that motion that Dave is the um, clerk. I vote yes, Carolyn. Uh, any further discussion? <laughs> Do you have anything to say? <laughs> Can I abstain? <laughs> no. <laughs> I, Trevor McDaniel. I, Dave Wolfram. All right. Now he can sign away his life. I know he can. All right. Good. She's All right. enjoying that. Thank you. Did we want to talk about um, Kelleher? We don't have it on the agenda, so but we. It's actually an item unanticipated. Okay, good. So let's discuss so, that. Oh, so I what happened? It, yep. it came in yesterday? It came in yesterday. So the recommendation okay. from Ty and Bond came in yesterday. Do okay. we have it here? No. It's way at the end, right before your executive oh, here it is. session okay. vote. So we had. Oh, here it is. Do, does anybody else want to speak to this first, or do you want me to read anything here? Um, basically, the recommendation is for the first um, company, ME. ME Smith, Inc., which yes. is a total bid of $272,000. They were the low bid on the job mm -hmm. by a lot compared to most. Um, um, uh, now, boy, that's a substantial amount of difference here. Mm -hmm. Especially from the top. And so Ty and Bond did a reference evaluation for, for, for performance, verified the performance references with respect to quality and workmanship, work schedules on prior projects, submittal and change order processing, cooperation and overall satisfaction from their references. And the references contacted for for confirmation had projects ranging from less than 400,000 to over 2 million. Um. They also, so Time Bond also reviewed their financial rating and financial background information. And based on the information that was made available and reviewed, it's their opinion that M.E. Smith has demonstrated that it is the lowest responsible and eligible bidder for the Kelleher Drive culvert replacement project. I have a question though. So sure. they've only done one culvert in the past and they did not submit two culvert projects Correct. completed in the last five years. That makes me a bit nervous. So what Ty and Bond did uh -huh. was they went back and they reviewed, when they were doing this reference check, they reviewed oh. types of projects that are similar to Kelleher. And water main projects are very similar. Mm. Yep. How? Because you're putting pipe into a yeah, but this is building a whole concrete thing. With yeah, that's what you're doing with the water main. No. Um, no, you're not. Um, here's the problem. We have to award. Um, look at the difference in the prices. And I did talk to Kevin. I did talk to Chris Curtis. And Ty and Bond's confident that they can do it. And one of the things that you notice in the end of the letter, one of the things that they m reference is... that we would make the award contingent on the receipt of the required performance and payment bonds and the receipt of the required certificate of insurance. Mm -hmm. Those two things cover the town if there is a performance and payment issue. And they're required anyway, 
But what you're doing is you're reinforcing the fact that you are making it very clear that Emmy Smith has to perform. Because what happens with those performance and payment bonds is it's a guarantee for certain qualifiers within the project. And I don't know if Kevin, I asked Kevin if he was gonna talk to it. We were uh. confident of our argument, but we're, but you know, I'm not Kevin and I know that he was, he was confident. I did talk to Kevin a bit about it and yep. he, he did say, you know, he felt like they could, they could do the work and if not, they've got bonds that- That's what the bonds are for. We, we pull them out and put somebody else in. Um, it's just I'm that just we have a, that such a nobody... narrow window of time that we want to do That's this. part of the issue is we do have a narrow window um, in order to complete the project. Um, and there's a significant difference um, um, I, the in the other, the other bids that came through. Well, the conservation district has done uh, some co-echo um, contracting. They, they're the one that did the Sawmill River with us. And they came in um, low. And, you know, they were lowest bidder. But they were so neat and tidy. And they did such a fantastic job. I hate, I hate. I know that we can't do that, but um, you know they were they were easy to work with, Ooh. and 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 they were so neat and tidy on along the um, highway there, and you know this is this is right down in the middle of our town. It's you know on our street. I understand. People that. are going to have to have alternative access you know and the second lowest bidder you have to go with the lowest bidder no matter you what. you don't but they have to do a complete reference evaluation mm -hmm. yeah. and so, ty and bond has said that they've done that well, what i'm what i'm questioning uh. is did ty and bond get you know two covert projects from every other builder like some con some co echo contracting did everybody like how many other people supplied Everything else. Well, they've said here, it's important to note that Emmy Smith did not submit two culvert projects completed in the previous five years. Right. And I'm wondering, did any of the others? Oh, I'm sure. Yes. Yeah, well, I know, like, Davenport certainly does yeah. a lot of culvert. Just from experience, Davenport's does a lot of culvert yeah. right. replacements. And they were right in the middle, you know, of bid-wise. Uh, I just feel a bit and so you have to understand that in that in the first paragraph on the fir on the second page of this, mm -hmm. the references stated that Emmy Smith conformed to the project schedule and were cooperative on site. One reference described how they succeeded in finishing specified project items earlier than others, as requested by the client. And one reference also shared Emmy Smith's amenability to changing the contract conditions during the project. That well, speaks to Emmy right. Smith being flexible, but, and, right. and so one thing, the last thing I'll say about it, you guys will make this decision, but the last thing I'll say is, you know, one of the things that we depend on tie and bond in this particular um, contract services type of work that they do is their evaluative response to you. Mm -hmm. So look at your, the, the issue would be here is if you hold off, we're now outside no, the timeline. No, I no, we're not going to hold off. No, but it, think about Trevor's unsure bit. about it. So, um, no, we, we need to go ahead because it, we it may mean time. that we have to this have is, another conversation about it. It's very dry right now. We need to move forward with this. We need to get this done. I know, but Trevor has some concerns. And David, did you have any concerns? Uh, no, not really. I have a gut feeling about this one, but all right. Well, here's what I would suggest you do. You can't do. go on gut. You got to go if, on what's here. So, you know, the uh, tide and bond reputation is on this as well. Right. And, you know, there's a fair amount of work that they do with the town and that could be doing with the town. So, mm -hmm. I have to value their opinion on it, you know. The only one I really know, uh, Virgilio and Davenport are the only two I know on this list. Um, right. Both are very good contractors. Right. Well, um, we, Davenport have, did the restoration work on the, um, by the sewer treatment plant and was very successful doing that. And like I said, Sumco Echo, uh, that was a $550,000 project 
over on the Sawmill River. Mm -hmm. And they were so neat and tidy and, and just, I mean, everything was immaculate at the end of every day. Okay. You know? okay. And that Do was, we know where Emmy Smith is based out of? I had the bid tabulation, but I don't have it printed out for okay. the meeting. Um, so here's what I would suggest you do. I don't want to wait on this, though. They do have the performance bond, well, and they do have this. They they have to give us the performance bond before, they and and the, as well as the certificate of insurance, um, before we you know go forward. So, right. So he, how about we do this? Why don't we switch gears and talk about the warrant because we have a yeah. time limit? Okay. Kate is on the line. I would suggest we talk about yeah. the marijuana article first so yeah. that we can get through that portion of it. But All at right. 7.30, we have a call scheduled to go into executive session. So um, if we're gonna do that, we may have to not adjourn at the end of executive session and come back into open session. So I wanna okay. give you guys a chance to talk to Kate about the marijuana article. Okay. okay. So I'll, I'm going to go grab something out of the office, which is the bid tabulation. Okay. So, I mean, we could go forward with could, this. Could I, uh, could I just add a couple of comments? Oh, please, yes. please, Chris. Oh. I love your comments. Go ahead. Um, I, I, talked I talked extensively with Zach Chorniak at Time Bond about this um, and asked a lot of the same questions that you guys did. Okay. The overall sense I got from Zach, and he's done a lot of these projects, is that um, this, this might be you know, a really big and important project for Deerfield, but for, the, for companies like this, it's actually a pretty simple and small project. Okay. He thought it was highly unlikely that you would have any problems with this project. Okay. Um, the other thing I would mention is that um, the bid has to be awarded by May 29th because there's a 30-day time period okay. um, to, to do that. So um, I know you don't want to hold off. But no. there's, there's another reason not to hold. Hold off. Did, did, you, um, did they say if he, they had had any other experience working with Emmy Smith? Or did, does uh, anybody know They didn't know have them? experience directly with them, but there's a parent company, I guess, that owns them that they did have um, a fairly good amount of experience with, and, and it sounded like that was favorable. Okay. All right. Okay, we can move forward. I, just, um, can, I mean, I just can, wanted to... Go ahead. Did you have anything else? Can I... I just wanted to mention one other detail. Um, I was talking to Zach about, you know, this is this is visually kind of an important project because it's right in the center of town, and, and yeah. you want a culvert that, you know, is very functional, but you also might want one that looks fairly decent. Yes. Right. And I, I, I just bounced this idea off of him of, of the possibility of, of using something that's called form liners, which basically is to mold the concrete so it look, might look like stone or brick yes. or something like that. So it's not just, and he said that um, he, he could look into doing that as a possible amendment to the bid if it didn't cost too much. Right. Um, we do have some, you know, some extra money to play with essentially here in the grant because we came in so far under the, yeah. the grant amount. Maybe that would be really great. And I just wanted to mention that to no, you. No, I'd be grateful um, for that because I think it, it does, it's, you know, it's a focal point right next to our monument and, um, and right across from the high school. Everybody parks, turns, everything there. It, I'd love it to look, you know, I know it's got a function. We're not building the Taj Mahal, but it, it's a culvert. But it's still, like you said, you're looking at the end of that and, and the walls and stuff. It, I think it... It would be nice if it was dressed up a bit, for sure. That so would be beautiful. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Um, All right. Well, I'll okay. make a motion Good. to move forward with this. Okay. Do we have a second? Okay. I'll, I'll second it. Any further discussion? Only that we make sure we, make, we get the pretty out of it because the bid's so low. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> so we need okay. the pretty out of it. Okay. Um, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Dave Wolf from I. Aye, Carolyn, yes. All right. Um so so is that all is that a change order already, Chris? Well it would be, yeah. I mean if they were gonna yeah. do um, some work to it. We, we we need to get a we need to get a price quote for right. it first, but yeah, we'll 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 Report bring that back, back to you when okay. that when that okay. comes okay. up. All right, all right, thank you. Thank you. Um, Th so, thank you very much. Yeah, everyone. thank you. Yes, okay. have a good night. Thanks for all your work and, and um, have a great night. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks a lot. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. Go put flower pots on the end of it, too? <laughs> yes. Uh, and Kate, uh, Kate's on the line. Kate, are you on the line? 
I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes. How are you? Hi, Kate. Good. How are you doing? We're doing real good. Doing real good. So we're about ready to jump into the um, warrant articles for the annual town meeting. Um, so I guess the first thing Kate, uh, Casey wanted us to discuss was the marijuana. Bylaw. Kate, can you walk them through some of the details that we I, I did mention some of the details in the document and I don't think I got your email late so I didn't send you my revision and I can go do that I just have to step away from the mic to do it um, the the main there were some main issues with the marijuana article so I if you would be ha helpful and add some of Lisa's guidance to the two of us that would be share it with the board that would be helpful yeah, so sure. So essentially, um, Lisa thought that you guys would first like to talk about um, the process. And you know, with, so first off, just as an aside, we are trying to recommend that our town make these warrants as streamlined as possible mm -hmm. um, because although there, there are things that you want to get accomplished, we're worried about attendance at town meetings, et cetera, um, and we're worried to try to get these town meetings done quickly, um, as quickly as possible, dealing with the most critical issues, which are the financial issues. But that being said, um, if you want to proceed with the marijuana bylaw, remember that I don't know if you've had a planning board hearing on that. Yes. And remember, it has to, a hearing still under the relaxed open meeting law has certain standards, and that is that the public has to be able to participate. So I don't right. know if, if so. tonight's meeting people from the public can call in and, and participate. They or, or not, and I don't know what you're... Well, so here, I'll... I'll what can? I could tell you, Kate. Um, so yes, they can. Yeah, they can, they can um, participate. Um, there has been a public hearing on this specific thing, which um, this specific... Article law, on the warrant. Uh, that is on the warrant has, right has had a hearing, but did not get a favorable vote out of the planning board. So um, right. I've been thinking a lot about this, um, whether it, it's on the agenda or not. I mean, I, so I'll, I'll just tell the public how I'm feeling a bit about this. So there were two items, and I'll just run through this quickly so everybody understands why it's here and why it may disappear. Um, there, uh, there's been a couple of issues that we wanted to, that I've wanted to see change since we've had the marijuana bylaws in town. Marijuana has passed overwhelmingly in town. There is some opposition to it. We have yet to see a dollar from it. Um, there are two companies in town that have um, plans and are working and building things to cultivate. One is a cultivation place, um, kind of down down on uh, Mill River Road. Is that right? Mill River Road. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other is in the marijuana. Mill Village. Mill Village Road. And the other is in the marijuana overlay district, which is in the center of town both facilities one week just signed another um, compliance letter for the ccc tonight for deerfield natural so we're trying to gather uh funding because um we want we see the economic benefit to having marijuana produced in here and sold in here uh and cultivated in in town um it's a it's a it's a can be a fairly large revenue driver and with budgets so tight every year um, we need any economic development we can get um, the original couple of years ago when we did this, we ended up um, um, allowing cultivation and, and we allowed one retail facility and that retail facility is in the overlay district. That'll be a, a medical marijuana and a retail facility along with cultivation. The other um, company we did a host agreement with down on the river is, um, is Sons Mass Inc. Neither of them are allowed to do uh, manufacturing which is it's kind of a weird name for this but it's really processing the plant cleaning it getting it you know after it grows it's processing it into the product so making it whatever it is when they sell it and um, taking oils out of it making edibles that kind of stuff um, so we think there's a large uh, 
amount of revenue that can come to the town if that and an alternate to the host community agreements if we did allow that in those specific places um, the so um, a lawyer for one of the companies decided to revise the um, bylaws that we have in town governing marijuana to um, allow that process to take place but in his um, effort to do that he was writing a bylaw that it would would allow cultivation um, and manufacturing in any RA district if it met all the other requirements that were needed to get a facility. We think that's broad. I think that's too broad. Um, I think there's general agreement that's too broad. During this um, process, there's been a parallel process driven by the planning board to do um, kind of the opposite, to not allow any other marijuana cultivations in the RA district or manufacturing anywhere except or maybe in the overlay district um, personally I kind of disagree with that I'm not saying that there shouldn't be any other cultivation anywhere um, I do think it's wrong to say that there shouldn't be any manufacturing only you know outside of the marijuana overlay district because you're, you're kind of creating only one company one entity to allow to do something in your town instead of creating competition or other opportunities. Um, I, think the, I think it's okay to allow manufacturing of the plant in the same facility that we have. We have two. It's really processing. It's, it's processing. processing. I know they say manufacturing, but it is processing, processing the plant. Yeah. And I think it, it is um, reasonable because it's a secure site. It's kind of hidden away with all the requirements of a growth facility. It does, it's not gonna add, you know, a ton more traffic or a ton more construction or any loud noise. It's, um, it's all in the same existing footprint that's there. So part of the plan was to, um, before COVID hit, was to allow both of these articles to town meeting floor um, and to, to have more robust hearings on both of these things. I think the planning board still hasn't had a public hearing on their process too and they need that to play out and with COVID happening we haven't really been able to do this so um, but with COVID happening we're seeing you know the possibility of a cratering of revenue to the town and we still need to run everything so this was a, a large amount of revenue that could come to the town and I thought it made sense to um, as we were working on financial issues this is a huge financial issue as are the um, pilots, as are the, the solar projects that are, you know, we have on the warrant to come through town. But um, in fairness, um, I think it's, um, I, I spoke to the chair of the, of the planning board to tell him kind of what I was thinking and, and what I would like to see happen. But um, I'm coming to the conclusion for the benefit and the health and safety of the residents and the needs of um, and the recommendations of our town council, our moderator, our town administrator, to hold on this um, bylaw amendment until we have a special town meeting in the in the fall, so that um, over the next coming months we can get people together and really flush out these two, and only bring one bylaw change to the um, to the people instead of having them to have to choose between too much and not at all, I think there's some middle ground that could come to, um, to negotiate that out between the planning board and, and uh, the select board and uh, for, the, for the economic well-being of the town. I think it's important that we work together and have public input and come up with one bylaw to take to the town instead of this competing all or nothing. Um, so, um, Unless anybody else has anything to say, I mean, I, I'm, I'm a, I know that, that the proponent of this bylaw is going to be pretty bummed, but m my gut tells me they're not going to be ready to process anyways before now in September. Um, I could be wrong about that. I could be ignorant about it, but I think it has a better chance of passing in September than it does tonight or in June 1st. Um, because we, there's not been no discussion. There hasn't been enough discussion and it, you know, and this does, you know, so the idea just to give everybody the, uh, the full picture is that we were gonna take this bylaw 
uh, change that was brought to us, and we were going to amend it on town floor to limit, so to take all these three pages and boil it down to, to restrict everything but that one facility so that we could then go on and have more of a discussion. But I think that gets a little too convoluted, and the town council thinks that it may be more substantially changing. I mean, we're not broadening it, so I kind of thought, well, if we're limiting its scope, but town council felt that we would have, um, we would be changing the nature of that more than what the public hearing had had discussions of. Um, it's not broadening it, it's limiting it, but it, it, all that takes time to review, and we just thought with all the work that's going on right now to keep people safe, it might be a better idea to hold until special town meeting, work with the planning board and set one bylaw forward for the planning board and the select board and the, and the residents of Deerfield to um, to approve. So um, I'm hoping that I could convince the members of the board to see the value in allowing the processing of the plant at, at that specific facility um, and, and really would only allow it in the two facilities that we have and then we would we would promise not to go forward with any other host agreements for any other facilities um, in the near future to you know to just to, to rest people's fears that this whole place wouldn't be filled with marijuana facilities all over the place. And I know the intention of the, of the town and the planning board originally, um, other than several members not wanting it at all, was to really benefit the farmers and to move forward with um, benefiting the farmers. And, and we hoped that a lot of this was going to be a, a crop that the farmers could use. Well, it turns out it's more of an industrial, you know, metal building kind of thing or a greenhouse kind of thing than it is a, a farming thing. We thought more of our farmers would take advantage of this, but. The way the legislation was passed in Massachusetts, they don't view it as agricultural. So um, it kind of the market is turning out. It is what it is. That big players are kind of taking a taking a role in, instead of our farmers. So I know that was really long-winded. I'm sorry, Kate, on that. But um, so uh, is there any other discussion on that before we removed it, or, or do you feel like we should keep it on? Uh, I don't know, Dave. What do you think? Well. Uh, I was wondering what Kate's input was on it. Kate, do you want to, after I <laughs> rambled there forever, do you want to say a few words? <laughs> She's I a will. lawyer. What do you think? Right. You, you stole my thunder. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, exactly that. I mean, it, it, hey, in any zoning bylaw situation, especially ones that tend to bring controversy, and even though Deerfield was. Um, you know, supported marijuana mm -hmm. and expressed that intention, um, there's always a risk because it's, it's people's properties, right, that are yeah. being affected in the, the town look and feel. And so it brings out a lot of surprisingly emotional reactions. And, and the fear is for these zoning bylaws that um, to occur in this kind of unique world that we're living in, you're not going to have the same representation at town meeting. Right. Um, and more importantly, you really need, it's, it's usually better to have cooperation between both the select board and the planning board by virtue of, of course, you want, you know, uni, unified, a unified response to the town meeting, but also um, there is a limitation in 40A that if, if this thing crashed and burned at town meeting just because of the pandemic and the people not showing up and all of those kind of factors yeah. that are unique to June 2020, you can't bring it back for two years right. under chapter 40A. So yeah. you're really, Running if a risk. your goal is to bring financial stability or or income to the town you may shoot yourself in the foot mm -hmm. for for just a couple of months right no i agree with that i agree with that um i just i'm just really i really wanted to get the revenue in i wanted to get this done and then we thought this would be an avenue to limit uh people's concern on the on the planning board that we were going to do you know multiple units all over the place um and i know there's still a discussion and maybe a discussion on whether uh, processing is is uh, appropriate in that location still but I think I could make that case um, I would like to try and make that case but I can't really do it in the next week so um, so I would uh, 
make a motion to remove Article 22 until September's special town meeting. I'll second that. All those in favor? Or any other discussion? Do you have any other? David? No, no discussion. Okay, so um, any further discussion? No. Uh, all those in favor? Dave Wolfram, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Okay. There you go. So that cut out a few pages, Kate. <laughs> um, so what are we going to do about the pilot? Um, so the pilot, name. yeah. So um, I know we have that scratched out here, but uh, w do we just not have enough information to get it done? I mean, they're going to be like, w it's really going to be ripping. a year and a half. Why don't we have the information? But I, I know we've had changes. I'm not looking at part you. Part of like, it is personnel changes. I know. But I know. part of it is I did ask Karen in the assessor's office about that today. And sure. there was they were looking for very specific information and they had trouble getting it too so i think it's maybe a miscommunication miscommunication on what what they're actually looking for and i mean the assessors mm -hmm. in terms of space allowance because they take how that space is configured into account so i specifically asked because i had just talked to lisa about it mm -hmm. and i think we need to refine because you take calculations that the assessors do and you put it into a table a tiff table carolyn's familiar with these and so is david the tiff table is what you send to deborah bronski at mass office of economic development that hasn't happened and so there's a disconnect there as well so the process is is you negotiate the agreement you negotiate the table the plan you send it to mass office of business development they look it over and they say okay take it to town meeting we haven't done that so it's been a series of things and deb has made herself available the problem is is we haven't had that firm information to say to them the other piece is, is they only meet on quarterly basis and I don't honestly think I tried to get in touch with her today I don't think they're gonna have a meeting before September so are they uh, my question is is this gonna um, hamper it's gonna hamper pilot yeah doing getting their tip I think the state? this well that's the thing the state works off of what we have to do so that was the reason I wanted to talk to Deborah but either way, we don't have a, we have a week. We don't have the, enough time to pull all that together. And so I had kept looking for it and talking to Karen because I went looking and couldn't find any. But what, so what I want to know is that if we, we did it in September, would they still be whole? I don't know. Here's how you deal with it. Dan and Lisa think we should pull it off if we're not ready for it um just for purposes of the warrant well we could leave it on and pass it you could leave it on and pass over it i think i'd rather do that um but i don't know that i'll be able to find you I an understand. answer I and so that well i want someone to reach out to pilot and, and talk to well them. i want to talk to kim about it yeah. i just i yeah. literally was not able to do that today i know you so I, we just got we just not, finalized the warrant to an extent that is readable I mean, there's an immense amount of craziness going on in every part of the business of every day Casey right it's now. not question you're working 60 70 hours a week 80 hours okay she has a cot here I need um, a cot. so can we Kate can we um we were thinking about leaving that on just in case by miracle uh I just didn't want to pull it and then find out by chance we could make something happen I just really don't want to hurt that business if they're looking for something to achieve between now and September um, but I, I don't know wh what they really need. I just don't want to. Um, well, someone needs to call them. Um, I will call Kim tomorrow and ask her. Yeah, and we and can, leave it on for now. Right. Okay. Because we ha we Friday uh, Thursday I think we're going to sign this by three or something like that. Right. So um, I would like to just keep that for a day until we can just kind of get a solid can, answer. Can you? That. I mean, I, I'm comfortable if you find out. Yeah. That they they could go till September right then, well, right. We need, then we yeah can pull it. I need to know what was populated for you know information like mm -hmm. what did they give us how was it processed that sort oh, of thing okay. and right. I did get yeah. some information and, and, but I, I I would just feel so much better if there was conversation with them well, I okay too. I will yep. talk to them 
I mean, all I've gotten is emails saying, are you working on it? And I'm like, yeah, we're trying to get to it. Well, that's the thing is we have, one of the problems that's happened is it's very difficult. There have been enough personnel changes that it's very difficult to dig some of this information out. And I'm lucky that um, Jennifer and Pat have been able to help me with that. Mm -hmm. But some of it is a deep dive. Yeah, I know. And I know. so this Casey. is one of those things. And, and, and emergency after emergency after emergency right. comes in constantly all day long. So I know. Um, okay. So Kate, are there anything, any specific things you want to draw their attention to besides on the, the marijuana on the warrant? Um, no, on the warrant, I think uh, Lisa gave it a full review, right? She did. Casey, so there was nothing in particular there, and I will chime in and say it's perfectly permissible to pass over an article. Some yeah. people move to dismiss it. Some people, the procedure doesn't really matter, but it happens yeah. all the time. Okay. Okay, thank you. So, and we won't have acceptance in American Way. We pulled that off, or, yeah, or and we're pulling off the bylaw. I've so. struck through a couple things, but yeah. we'll, I'll have to go back and formalize things that I had stricken and after talking this, to Lisa. And this mo municipal vulnerability match grant Article 15 was related to what Chris was doing, yes. right? Right, so okay. that number changes a little bit. Yep. Um, so that gets revised. Um, so let me just hit real quick. So, and you were gonna build um, some consent stuff and- So I did build in, together. I did build in the beginning article, Article yep. 1, actually yep. is, is seven article. items. Yep. And okay. it's the general, boilerplate isn't the right word, Kate, but it's it's, general items that get voted on a regular basis that have uh, very little controversy. Contracts, the elected officials' um, st um, stipends, yeah. that sort of thing. And that was at the advice of council with the um, approval of the moderator this afternoon. Perfect. Okay, that's great. So that looks good. And then article two is just an unpaid bill. Three is our reserve fund. Um, Four, you've got struck out the OPEB liability trust. Okay, so the OPEB liability, if you, well, I had struck it because Lisa and Dan thought maybe it could be put off to the fall. Um, so, but but that's, that's, a that's a choice, of, that's your choice. So it's built into the budget already. So my only like you're missing a really good down market. <laughs> so you can leave it in. Do you understand, Kate? That was the, really our only, um, I mean, like, we think OPEB is really important, and I mean, if, if you've got a down market right now, anytime you can get money in that is um, is a good idea. Um, we just think the upside. Yeah, of I mean, I won't I won't pretend to speak to the financials, yeah. um, but I have heard that from my own financial advisor when I look at my four hundred one k and cry. Yes, <laughs> it says don't but, sell. Uh, you no. Know, it, it is it is what it is, and it yeah. moves pretty quickly. Those I kinds so of articles too. still really generally don't generate a lot of discussion. Right. I, I would like to keep that. Okay. Okay. I think we'll it's important. It. I think it's important from our to, from our borrowing point of view too. Yes. Like, yes. I mentioned we, that. Remember, I mentioned that. Yeah. You I was did. That myself. You did. Yeah. yeah. But I'm, what you're seeing is what was the result of the conversation with Lisa. And yeah, Dan. that's fine. So and it's so too little money. Yeah. I, I mean, it's not very much money. That's good. So and then the out of district stuff is great. We're going to hold on the 350th so we can just do that in, in the fall. Right. So we would we remove know. this, which will change the article numbers, yep, and put fine. that off until the fall. And the yeah. classification comp study, the omnibus budget, wastewater treatment fund is pretty straightforward, um, the enterprise fund for SCEMS, the, um, the stabiliza rent stabilization fund, yeah, pretty straightforward. That may yesterday. have a little bit of question, but I can say that pretty quick. Right. That's pretty straightforward. Okay, so if you look at Article 12. Yeah. Capital, Capital projects. projects. So okay. this is a representation of the request that Lisa and Dan made to me today, yeah. which is to put all the detail that we would normally discuss in a handout yeah. on the warrant. Good. So Perfect. you put in the detail of the capital requests. Yeah. We would put in the, the SCEMS Enterprise Fund breakdown, mm -hmm. the wastewater treatment plant enterprise breakdown, and I still have to fix that. Um, <laughs> we would put in the there's a table the acknowledgement of gifts we would put the table that we normally see in the handout in that great the breakdown of library interest so what you're seeing with this article 12 is it a representation of the other types of information you'll, you'll see. put it that you'll put in there okay that's yes. fine that's and so good. that i didn't have time to finish putting that together because i was still working with brenda to get that information yeah um 
I think we removed the highway pickup truck, though. Yes. yes. It's in there, and we're going to talk. It's in there right now. She said that to me, so that yeah. we're going to. Okay. But it hasn't been voted. It hasn't been voted to remove. You all agreed to remove it. Yeah, <laughs> but she sent me the question, has this been Just voted, like Casey? I haven't, so. I haven't voted to remove the town common yet either because I kind of feel like... So again, this was what was approved at the last re revision mm -hmm. of that capital thing. Right. I, I don't think we should vote the town common out. Um, I just feel like... Could get we don't some have to spend the money. Stuff. I know, I know. We, right, it's just there as a placeholder. We don't have to, just like we didn't spend the 40 from last year right. on the complete streets and the common we thing. Can, we can move we that just, money back into general fund if we have to. Yeah. But I think but we at should least vote it's it. there, and then if we do if have we a grant vote it, If we get or, the MVP to do the Leary lot, yeah. and there's money to do the common. Tie in the design of that. Why wouldn't do we it. do it? Right, I agree with that. I think it makes sense. I mean, we're going to happen. It's going to happen. It's now's the time. Um, we just don't have to spend And it. the Frontier Regional Capital uh, request is, st is still there. Yes. I've not heard from anybody that's coming out. So Community preservation is going to be another one. So if you read the we're note gonna, in there, you'll have tables um, of we're, we're going to put the motion language representing each article request yeah. with the amount okay. plus the fund balances. So where they go. So yeah, that that's good, everybody, everybody because everybody goes, well, how much is in this one? Exactly. How much in that? It's all there for them. That's so perfect. if you look at the article above where you have an italicized and bolded note, you'll see the same thing in community preservation for the fund balances. <laughs> okay. I can't um, fog up my glasses here. Uh, so okay. you voted to keep the municipal vulnerability grant match in. Um, you'll adjust the size. Yep. yep. And everywhere that you see a quantum vote required, it specifies if there's a different majority than a simple majority vote. Will you, um, in that 106, will you have a table that says what we're doing with that or just do you, if you want me to i can okay. it's just a lot I mean, of because information because it does exp i mean it if, does if there's any way it would explain but you it know, explains we're, this is frontiers paying for this and just, you know it's a yeah. portion of what we're getting i mean we're for, bringing in a million dollars why right. wouldn't you vote a hundred to show it you know it, it, it helps people understand it and see it ahead of time and so, that's only if we get it right then we can and again it it's not it's not, we're not going to expend it if we don't get it. And okay. then, uh, then you've got the two solar projects, pretty yep. straightforward there. We've got the two properties, pretty straightforward there. Yep. You'll deal, we'll leave in the pilot right now for a day or so. Um, and we could pass it over if we leave it forever. The public ways are gone. The well, you, yeah, you could leave it in and pass it over, and that's yep. what I would recommend. That yeah. You leave it in and pass it over if we well, find if we, we don't have all the information. Right, on. and then every and then the marijuana thing's gone. So that's pretty so we slim remove down. the acceptance I mean, of the public way and the acceptance the marijuana bylaw. Right. This is going to be fast. What do you think, Kate? Is that better? I think it's great. I think it's great. I think this is the best approach you can take under the circumstances. And uh, not only um, will it make for a smooth town meeting, but I think your residents will appreciate it too. Yeah. Okay. That's good. So I have a question for the board, and maybe Kate can weigh in on this. Um, we have several items that are fundamentally a part of the articles themselves, the tables that need to go in. Um, I would request that the board approve this warrant as to form yep. and allow me to add those tables. Yeah, and then we'll sign it and at our convenience. Sign it at Friday. their convenience. Yeah. Kate, can I do that? Is that, is that something we can yeah, do? Yeah, absolutely. So okay. the motion should be uh, moved to approve the warrant um, subject to the addition of the tables discussed, something like that. Yep, so make a motion to approve the warrant um, as discussed tonight with the addition of the tables and information in the, in the motions that you're going to put forward. I'll and, second that. And then we will sign, um, I think, Thursday, right? Thursday Tomorrow. afternoon at Tomorrow the afternoon latest. Because I know she's got posted post Friday. So um, we have a second. Any further discussion? No. All those in favor? Dave Wolfram, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Okay. Thank you. So and, if uh, you finish that. We have. Anything else we need to clean up before we do an executive session? Um, no, nope, you got the Kelleher Drive contract award yep. that you decided, right? We did. We okay. voted that. All right. So then I would, I had rewritten the motion. Um, so 
I think you could do the motion for we're, executive oh, session. Okay. Let me first, before I do that, though, I just because we're going to go into executive session and then we're just going to adjourn when we come back out, I wanted to um, ask if anybody on the line have any public comment? Anybody want to come there and want to say anything? Or? No oh. comments from Chris Harris. Thanks. Hi, Chris. Thanks for joining. Anybody else? Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Paul Nick. Hey, Paul, how are you? Good, how are you? Are you, are you, I sort of lost track of the agenda. Yeah, we jumped you, all over. Are you approved or? All right. All right. We jumped all, all over. Right. So you're going to executive session? We are after, yeah. All yeah. right. Yeah. All right. Unless you have any questions. All right. So I will trust, uh, I will get a, uh, a blessing, but uh, I just, I'll, I'll uh, leave we, you guys alone then. Uh, okay. Okay. All right. Yep. All right. Thank you. Casey. All righty. Thank Great. you. Yep. It's a big fly. Oh, two fly. Um, so Brooks. executive session chairs uh, so declares a quorum of members is in attendance at this mm. meeting and an open meeting could have a detrimental uh, could be detrimental to the negotiating position of the public body for the following actions. A member of the select board moves. I move. Pursuant to Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 21A3, the Select Board enters into executive session to discuss with respect to collective bargain, bargaining or litigation if an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining or litigation position of the public body, and the Chair so declares, I do, and uh, we'll adjourn at the end of executive session. There's a roll call vote. I'd and like to add a friendly uh, yeah. addition. <laughs> sure, please do. Amendment. Amendment. Uh, uh, before the Mass General allows, uh, uh, put in. Uh, pursuant to. Pursuant to the uh, 940. CMR. CMR 29.02 to open the. Open meetings. Open meeting. I forgot to write that into the motion. Oh, Sorry. thank you. <laughs> Friendly um, amendment. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I will second that, Carolyn. Okay. And we will, um, we would invite in. Uh, Casey Warren and, and Kate, and Kate Federoff, our uh, town attorney. Um, so we have a second. And any further discussion? Roll call vote. Dave Wolf, am I? Kevin McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Well, thank you. Okay, so. Um, yes, John.